Welcome, dear brothers and sisters. In this program, it's my pleasure to share reports about our in-person activities. We'll also provide updates about our disaster relief efforts. Hey, go help them. Why don't you go help them? Obviously, I'm too busy to do it myself. Busy doing what exactly? Telling you to go help them. What exactly is it that you do? I don't see why this is so hard. I'm very busy telling other people to go help other people. Well, can you at least finance the project? Oh, God, you ask so many questions. Once you get there to help people, ask them to finance it themselves or ask the people around you if they'll help. And if worst case scenario, then go to the government and then you can ask them to help. So you're busy telling me to do something and you won't even finance it. Why do you exist? Jesus! And finally, in view of the rapidly changing world scene, we'll discuss the need for decisive action when we are confronted with dangerous circumstances. Now, most of the time, I think these governing body updates are not really full of humdingers, but more of just some wet farts. So I don't usually cover them uh, in that much of detail, and this one is no exception, except for a couple points that I did find to be very interesting, and just another insight into just how the governing body thinks and their complete obsession now with trying to raise more money for the organization, while at the same time openly admitting that they're not really using the money to help people. I find it fascinating. Since September 1, 2022, we've resumed the House to House Ministry. And we also had a worldwide campaign to offer Bible studies using the Enjoy Life Forever brochure. For those of you sad people out there that don't know, I mean, you must feel really bad about yourself not subscribed to the channel, not keeping up to date with what's going on. <laughs> but uh, over on the uh, other channel that me and Alt Worldly do for our live streams, I have been going over how I have been having visits with Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, a lot of people have been asking how that's going, and I've been a little bit silent on that, but I can definitively tell you that next week I will have another update because I thought perhaps Perhaps the saga was over, but it appears the saga must continue. I absolutely have had a blast with those live streams. I think they're some of my favorite content that I've actually ever done, and it's been uh, really cool. So thank you uh, for everyone that's gone over there and supported and joined the live streams and watched those videos. But yeah, um, if you guys want to know exactly how the, uh, the campaign went for starting Bible studies in September... Some lucky Jehovah's Witnesses, the first door they knocked on in two years, decided to knock on my door, and we've had a hoot and a holler ever since, and a few ups and downs, but I think by the end of the saga, we will have a happy ending. Fingers crossed. Anyway, if you guys want to check those videos out, they're over on the JW Streams channel. Many honest-hearted ones are responding to this good news of something better. Nope. We respect the individual decisions of our brothers and sisters on this matter. So he had a little segment here that I cut out uh, where he's talking about wearing masks. Now, I always crack up whenever they insert these little, well, we want to give you the personal freedom. Oh my God, finally, 
Finally, I can have some personal freedom. Watchtower has been suffocating me for my entire life, ever since I was born into the world. They've just told me where I need to be, uh, who I can talk to, who I can marry, who can I date, how can I touch myself, like every single aspect of your life is controlled by Watchtower. And then, well, if masks aren't mandatory, then we'll let you make that choice yourself. And I think you only say something like that if you are used to controlling every aspect of someone's life. Like, you don't go and tell someone, well, we're going to give you this personal freedom unless you're already manipulating everything else in that person's life. So I do always just find it amazing whenever they come out with, okay, well, here, here's your little personal freedom card. You, you can have this one, but don't you go running around watching rated R movies or listening to rap music or anything like that. Oh my God, it's so funny. We're pleased to announce the release of our new video. It is entitled, I don't give a f about you or anything that you do. Our family and friends are precious to us. They show us love. They are there when we need them. So when we lose a loved one in death, we want comfort from someone who understands. God and his son Jesus understand. While on earth, Jesus experienced the pain of losing family and friends. We need a black man, and if we can't find one, we need a white guy with a bad tan. After the death of a close friend named Lazarus, Jesus' grief was intense. He felt what others felt. The pain was crushing, yet his empathy moved him to comfort others. Still, he wanted to do more. So this video was designed to comfort people that are going through a difficult time. They've lost someone they deeply cared about, and here comes Jehovah's Witnesses ready to save the day and hopefully and indoctrinate one more suffering person. And you're someone that is suffering, and if you are even having a conversation with the Jehovah's Witnesses, I'm assuming that you are a Christian as well, and they come to you like, oh, we got just what you need, just what the doctor ordered, baby. And they show you this of, uh, of Barbie, Ken, bronzered Jesus cosplaying with his friends in a dusty field. And look, he's fake crying. <laughs> Don't you feel better now? A special magazine entitled Help for Those Who Grieve has been prepared to provide comfort. You can download your copy free of charge on JW.org. You cannot learn from books. Good. We also have some updates about our disaster relief efforts. As reported on JW News, Hurricanes Fiona and Ian have affected our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean and in parts of Canada and the United States. Sadly, one brother in Cuba died. Between the two storms, over 3,600 of our brothers' homes in over a hundred kingdom halls were damaged or destroyed. The branch offices are working hard to provide assistance and spiritual encouragement. We continue to pray for all those affected by natural disasters and for all those who are providing relief. It is interesting how he says people that are doing the relief work. It's almost like he's differentiating what they're doing. Well, we're offering assistance and our prayers. To a governing body member, their prayers could be considered assistance. Hey, make sure you donate money so we can take some time out of our busy schedules and pray for you guys. But that to one side, why are they so quick to give you the numbers? Here's how many kingdom halls were destroyed or damaged. Here's how many brothers and sisters. Here's all the places they were from. 
And yet they never can give their own numbers. Watchtower, please. All we want to know is where this money is going. Tell us, like, and show us the receipts. We bought X amount of building material. We hired a, a construction company because we didn't have enough hands on deck. Like, what did you actually do? And please let us know if then you're asking or demanding that those people, once they get their insurance checks, pay that back to you. Uh, we want to know the numbers because then you're just using free labor and then getting that insurance money back. So it's actually profitable for you to do this disaster relief work. We want to know the facts. Stop hiding behind. We provide assistance and love. Stop hiding behind that crap and actually show us what you're doing. Because I promise you, if you want to be a respected organization that does charitable work, you need to provide these details or else you look like a freaking clown. It's encouraging to hear how so many are working hard to help our refugee brothers get back to a more normal life. And we're so proud of our refugee brothers for being flexible and for having realistic expectations. So this is a segment that is talking about the war and how people are being displaced. And this part really caught my attention because he says, you know, we thank you brothers for having a realistic expectation. A realistic expectation, does that mean that there has been people riding into the branch asking, why aren't you guys doing more? And he's thanking them for having a realistic expectation that, well, I mean, there's only so much we can do. I mean, the government can do this, your local brothers and sisters. Beyond that, I don't really know what we can do. I, I, I don't know exactly why he said that because I'm assuming if I'm if I'm being displaced from my home and my country and everything and I'm you know having to flee because of various circumstances, I'm not thinking, oh well now I'm just going to be living the life of luxury. I don't think anyone goes in with that mindset. So I don't understand what a realistic expectation. People that are in that horrible, difficult situation, have very realistic exp expectations about what it's going to be like. It's not like, oh, I'm going to flee and then just all of a sudden everything's just going to be a big party. Uh, I don't know like who, what else it could mean. And hey, if I'm wrong or if you guys know, tapped into the mainframe and know what the heck he's talking about, comment down below. Anyway. Many of our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and Russia are facing this question. Should I flee? That can be a very difficult decision to make. Unless the government directs us to flee, it's a personal decision. We do not expect Jesus or an angel to tell us to leave. But Jehovah does expect us to use our power of reason. I found this to be really strange, and I don't really get it. God, Jesus, the angels are instructing the governing body to give direction on the most mundane things you can possibly think of, and the most serious, life-changing, life-threatening things you can imagine. It, 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 from the blood policy all the way down to using their suggested presentation. All of this is supposed to be God's direction. Why wouldn't it be God's direction then for how someone can keep them and their family alive and safe during a war? That's would, that would appear to me to be something pretty significant. Why wouldn't he give them that sort of instruction? That seems like it would be quite helpful. Now, in my mind, I think, do the governing body recognize that they're just some goofy guys that live in New York and they shouldn't be commenting on this? They just need to keep their mouth shut? Have they been getting letters 
uh, from the the branches in this area, there's that net. He's back. And from the brothers and sisters in that area saying, hey, what should we do? What should we do? We need to get God's download here. What what is God's instruction? And they're just like, yeah, we're not going to we don't want to tackle this one. I don't really get it. But I do find it interesting how at the end here he's like, you know, he's not going to tell you what to do, but he wants you to use your power of reason. Of all the people telling their followers, use your power of reason. I I hope that every person that's a, a physically in, mentally out Jehovah's Witness just absolutely cracks up when they hear this because <laughs> they're like, my power of reason told me that you're a buffoon and that I should stop listening to you and not going to allow you to control my life anymore. If anyone used their power of reason and applied that to any of Stephen Lett's talks, They would immediately just be like, well, looks like I was raised in a cult. Time to get out. What's the next step? I find it so funny because they don't want people to use their power of reason. In the last uh, September broadcast, he was showing people how they shouldn't use their power of reason. Don't even look at the apostate things or any negative media information. It doesn't matter if it's from the news source. That's all negative. You are not allowed to use your power of reason when it comes to reading a news article. Now, if you're asking for life advice, if you're trying to say, hey, I want to do what's right in God's eyes. I want to know like what decision he's going to bless. And, you know, there's my life is about to change dramatically because of where I live and there's a war happening and I don't know whether me and my family need to get out. Something extremely important. And uh, what does he come up with? Well, we're not going to make that decision for you. It is absolutely crazy that they will make the decision for you on what news articles you can read. And they won't help you when it comes to such a life-altering decision that you and your family are faced with. Being prepared allowed them to make the personal decision to leave quickly when they saw the danger. Ahead of time, they obediently followed the direction to have go bags and a full tank of gas in the car. So on God's list of priorities, when he is giving direction to the organization, he's not going to give them direction that would... I don't know, save someone's life, say if a natural disaster was was coming or there was going to be some unforeseen circumstance. Hey, don't leave the house this morning, pal. No, he won't give you that direction, but he will give you the direction to have a tank of gas and a go bag ready to go. So we see that relief work is sacred service. It is a vital part of our ministry. We often say thank you, but we want you to know how very much we appreciate that you are generously supporting our relief efforts. You're providing food and rebuilding homes and kingdom halls. When refugees come, you're welcoming them at border crossings and into your homes. You're helping our brothers rebuild their lives and provide to them what they need. All of this is greatly needed and deeply appreciated. And as per usual, with a governing body update, we're left with more questions than we did get answers. But hey, we're here for it. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.